or introduced by latest guideline for additional resistance to fluoroquinolones, not aminoglycosides. So, answer for that this question uh, is that this is false statement. The true is resistance to fluoroquinolones. So, 84% of you mark it wrongly. So, that can, you know, tell your uh, level of participation in this lecture series. So, obviously, you all are not participating honestly. So, it's, it's not, uh, you know, good to see that kind of response. Anyways, so here we are now starting our discussion on, uh, so we have finished our discussion on TB. Uh, pharmacotherapy of TB. So, ATT we have covered that is anti tubercular therapy. So, now we are going to discuss anti leprotic agents. So the name for this is MDT, like ATT for TB, ART for HIV. Similarly, we call the regimen as MDT, multi drug treatment for <laughs> leprosy. I'm sorry. So, this is how we. Uh, use the term MDT. So, whenever somebody say MDT, it means you must know that uh, we are talking about leprosy treatment. If we uh, we are saying ATT, it means uh, we are talking about TB treatment and if it is ART, we are talking about uh, HIV treatment. So, before starting that, one one more time I would like to ask any of you if, if the audio is clear and if the slide is visible, please let me know so that I can proceed without a delay. And uh, uh, we will finish two topics. Uh, first one hour we will finish this leprosy, and after one hour we will finish. Uh, we will try to discuss anaerobic. Uh, whatever the time permits, we will go uh, that way. So as you all know, uh, leprosy is you know caused by Mycobacterium leprae, and uh, it is also known as Hansen's disease. It's a pathological part, and you are supposed to read it from there. And uh, it attacks mostly superficial tissue, mainly nerves and skin is the target for uh, leprosy. And on various symptoms and signs, you will see skin and nerves. And uh, very, very slow growing organism, that is the limitation of treatment because any organism which is uh, growing fast is an easy target for our treatment. But the organism which are uh, growing slowly is very difficult to target. So, less activity. Uh, less effectiveness of the drug. So, this also you know since 8th or 9th class that organism cannot be cultured in artificial media but grow in the foot pad of 9 bended dermatitis. This, this you know. And uh, with that, this letter. इसका फोटो ले लेते हैं ये सबको दिखाना है ना हाँ ठीक है जी ओके सो दिस दिस आर दी ड्रग्स यू कैन सी राइट नाउ ऑन द स्लाइड्स दैट एंटीलेप्रोटिक ड्रग्स एंड बेसिकली देर आर इन एमपीटी देर आर थ्री ड्रग्स द फर्स्ट लाइन ड्रग वन इज सल्फोन ग्रुप the zone for the sulfonamide group has been completed, so you you all know the mechanism of action of it. Then there is one new drug, clopazimine, and then there is one drug, rifampicin, which is an anti-tubercular drug, but also useful in treatment of leprosy. And ifunamide is another drug from second line uh, ATT, is also useful in leprosy. But the three drug names which you need to remember as far as MDT is concerned are, are dapson, clopazimine, rifampicin. Now a good thing again. See, you are very fortunate uh, people that right now the ATT guidelines are also very simple. There is no division of category. There is only one category. So, you need to remember only HRZD for two months and HRE for next four months. And there are very uh, clear-cut single-line regimens for MDR and XDRTB, DPAL regimen like drugs. Similarly, in leprosy earlier days, it was like key for possibility we use two drugs and for multibacillary we use three drugs, but now there is no confusion at all. In both the cases, we use all the three drugs, Depson, Clopazimine, and Rapamcin. Okay? So, so there is no confusion now. All the three drugs we should use in both the cases, whether it is possibacillary or multivacillary, it doesn't matter. You use all the three drugs. The only difference would be 
the duration minimum duration of uh, treatment that is six months for possibly and multivacillary kill 12 months but it is minimum duration depending on the response we can increase the duration as well so minimum duration is six months for policy and sometimes you need to give this same drug treatment mdt for 12 months as well for possibly but you need to remember this that there is only one difference is nowadays in between posse and multi is that the duration of treatment which is minimum six months and uh, for posse and uh, minimum 12 months for multivacillary leprosy <coughs> now what is possibly leprosy what is multivacillary leprosy you need to read it from your pathology please read uh, whenever you read pharmacology try to read the same topic from the pathology and for better understanding there are some other antibiotics which can be used in case uh, there is some uh, contraindication for the use of first line drug so we can use chloroquinolone like ofloxacin uh, uh, and other drugs like lepromycin and metolite group and you know, cyclic kind of drugs we can use <coughs> so uh, let's discuss a little bit about that as you all know, it is a sulfonamide group of antibiotics. So, mechanism of action, you know. So, it is a derivative of 4-4-diamino diphenyl sulfone, which is not, uh, you know, uh, you know, required to remember. But yes, the chemical name of Depson is this, DDS. And it is a broad spectrum antibiotic because it is having multiple actions and you will see Depson in many places. Antibacterial action, you will find in antimicrobacterium, we are using in leprosy. Antifungal treatments, now you will see Depson, use, use of Depson in some places. And also in antiprotozoal, like in malaria, you will see. So there are a lot of uh, action of Depson. So it is not a broad spectrum antibacterial. It is a broad spectrum antimicrobial drug, you know. So antibacterial property, antifungal property, antiprotozoal action, all is the Depson is actually very very useful drug for us now as we uh, remember that amongst all the ATT only one drug is amputol is static res or sidel okay first line ATT may pyrazinamide rifamcin isoniazide were sidel bactericidal and if amputol was bacteriostatic here you need to remember that out of all the three drugs only one is sidel that is rifampicin so out of Depson clofazimine and rifampicin only one drug is sidel in nature, that is rifampicin. Rest two drugs, Depson and Clofazimin, are bacteriostatic. So there is no confusion about that. Anti-inflammatory action also. Depson has very, very good anti-inflammatory action actually. And hence, in resolving symptoms, it is very useful because any infection will lead to inflammation ultimately. And a drug having anti-infective as well as anti-inflammatory action is uh, a welcome drug to use in that case. But uh, uh, because of high risk of development of resistance, we are not using it alone because earlier for the treatment of lep leprosy, only Depson was given, but later on guidelines changes and they added Amsin and Clopazimin to <coughs> protect it from development of resistance. So here is the mechanism of action, which you already know. It is a common mechanism of action of all the sulfonamides like Depson, paraminosalicylic acids. So what it is actually doing is it is inhibiting dihydropteroid synthesis enzyme, which is ultimately inhibiting the synthesis of uh, tetrahydrofolic acid, which is important for the survival of bacteria. So that is why it is very important to remember the mechanism of action because we need to know the mechanism of development of resistance. So whatever here happening is that either the bacteria will, uh, you know, due to some genetic mutation there is there is some chain in gene which is responsible for synthesis of this enzyme will happen or mostly what happen is bacteria are using alternative pathway for uh, synthesis of this folic acid uh, rather than this pteridine power path so this is the development mechanism of development of resistance i am not going deep into it because sulfonamide we've already covered you need to read it so the important thing about Depson is its anti-inflammatory effect so, what is the reason for its anti-inflammatory property? One is that uh, the in, these are the reason. <coughs> Actually, any reason by which so far आपने pathology Robbins में inflammation पढ़ा होगा. All the reasons of inflammation and all the way through which those inflammation inflammatory response can be checked 
here you can see in dexon as well so anti inflammatory effect of dexon is because of many uh, uh action mechanisms like inhibition of tissue damage by neutrophil so it it, it it inhibit the tissue damage by neutrophil it inhibit the neutrophil myeloperoxidase activity which is an important uh, enzyme for the destruction of tissue which leads to inflammation it inhibits the activity of neutrophil lysosomal enzyme which is a lysing uh, enzyme and it lyses uh, many cells leads to uh, you know uh, uh, recruitment of inflammatory cells then it acts as scavenger of free radicals free radicals are responsible for inflammation so it is it acts as scavenger for free radicals generated by neutrophil and it inhibits the migration of uh, inflammatory mediators right so like neutrophil to the inflammatory region so main main action of dexon as anti inflammatory drug is action on neutrophil so these are the few reasons why which dexon is also having anti inflammatory property apart from antibacterial anti fungal and anti protozoal action that's why and it is very very cheap economically also it is good the only thing is the side effects and uh, and the resistance to dexon these two things are challenge for us otherwise it is a wonderful drug to use so what are the indications as we discussed so far that the spectrum is broad it is used in leprosy so this is antibacterial action of dexon which we'll read resistance malaria cases may be used dexon along with pyrimethamine and chlorpropionyl these are also sulfonamide group of drug it is used in prophylaxis of toxoplasma gondii and pneumocystis gyrovaci so this is uh, useful in the treatment of these protozoal infection as well then in inflammatory disease apart from infection they are very very useful in treatment of pemphigoid dermatitis herpetiformis rather the dapson is considered as drug of choice for dermatitis herpetiformis okay then linear iga bullous disease relapsing chondritis means there are so many inflammatory diseases where you can use dapson so one thing you need to remember the spectrum of dapson which is broad spectrum anti microbial so it has antibacterial property anti protozoal anti fungal property as well and additional anti inflammatory property and as it is very very good drug in treatment of leprosy so there are few adrs like uh, nausea vomiting and anorexia is very common cit adrs are very common with all the drugs so this you already know apart from that allergic reaction and pruritus can happen with all the sulfonamide drugs they are known to cause uh, you know allergy that's why antigen sensitivity testing is very very important before giving these drug and history of uh, allergy to the drug is very very important whenever you are using sulfonamide group of drug g6 pd deficiency patients they it leads to hemolysis so this is another uh, example of pharmacogenomic those the population which who are having deficient in g6 pd enzyme if you give sulfonamide group of drug hemolysis can happen and which is which may be life threatening so this is this is another example of uh, pharmacogenomic condition like isoniazide and acetylation then myth hemoglobinemia so what is myth hemoglobinemia it is uh, uh, genetic deficiency in nadh dependent myth hemoglobin reductase so it is also a, a peculiar side effect of dapson apart from that rarely neurotoxicity and psychosis can happen so you can see this toxicity profile nausea vomiting and anorexia is very very common allergic reaction is also common hemolysis in patient with g6pd deficiency is very very severe condition with hemoglobin hemoglobin toxicity can also happen these are the reasons why which we need to use dapson very cautiously okay so now let's come to the drug number 2 which is clopazimin we are going to discuss it here <coughs> it is a fat fat soluble uh, riminofenazine dye so what exactly is clopazimin clopazimin is a dye and you must know that most of the drug during world war 1 and world war 2 are introduced because that point of time during world war 1 and world war 2 the textile industry in europe was the was blooming industry so they use a lot of dye and from those dyes lot of drug came uh, into the main stream so uh, we got lot of drug from the uh, synthetic dyes 
Clopazamine is one of the example, and it is an it is a very very old drug. It is not a new drug, but uh, because of its toxicity, it has limited use. Now we are using it in treatment of as a first line in treatment of leprosy. It is bacteriostatic, as I told you, only rifampicin is idle amongst three. So <laughs> there are multiple mechanism action proposed for clopazamine, which you need to remember that it can kill. The bacteria, no, it cannot kill the bacteria. It can reduce, it can decrease the growth of bacteria, uh, the activation of bacteria by membrane disruption. It can inhibit the mycobacterial phospholipase A2 enzyme, uh, which is one of the proposed theory that it can act through that way. Inhibition of mycobacterial potassium ion transport. This is another theory. Uh, then there is uh, one uh, mechanism action suggested that it can. Uh, it, it, it uh, can be used in treatment of leprosy because it generates H2O2. Then there is one more uh, mechanism action that is interference with bacterial electron transport chain, and finally a flux pump inhibition. So there are multiple you know mechanism of action of clopazamine. So you need to remember that it is a dye; it is not a natural product. Second thing, it is a first line drug in treatment of leprosy. And third thing is uh, nowadays it is used in both posse and multi. Earlier, glucosamine was used for multi only, multi bacillary leprosy. But nowadays uh, there is no such uh, discrepancy. And maybe the guideline will change after six months. It is uh, in these cases we need to continuously update ourselves with the guidelines. This is 2018 change where they added glucosamine in regimen of posse bacillary. And these are the possible mechanism of glucosamine. Like Depson, it is. Also having additional anti-inflammatory activity, and the reason may be uh, decrease in recruitment of macrophages, T cells, neutrophil, and complement uh, system. So it is used in prevention of lepra reaction. So we will see lepra reaction one and lepra reaction two, where you can see the clopazamine use. Uh, bioavailability is not that good, but we can use it orally 50-60 percent, and it is reduced by antacid and increased by fatty foods. So it is recommended that it should not be used within three hours of Using antacid, and it should be used after using some fatty food like milk and some dairy products. So uh, it can be taken with the milk. But nowadays we are giving uh, complete sachet actually MDT, just a ATT come uh, uh, fixed dose combination drug. We are giving. We are supplying this to the patient. Uh, then there is good penetration in the tissue and it metabolizes in the liver. Apart from uh, leprosy, it can be used in uh, chronic skin ulcer, which is known as Bourouli ulcer. You need to read Bourouli ulcer from your pathology book. It is important uh, thing. Many times people ask about Bourouli ulcer, so it is also a mycobacterial disease, which is produced by Mycobacterium ulcerum, and uh, you can use clopazamine in the treatment of Bourouli ulcer. Other uh, indication of clopazamine is. Uh, uh, Mycobacterium avium complex treatment MAC, which we already discussed. Side effect of uh, clofazamine is GI upset, and this is very important thing that is reddish black discoloration of skin. Now, do not get confused with the reddish uh, discoloration of secretions by rifampicin. Rifampicin can cause reddish uh, discoloration of secretions, sweat and uh, urine. Why clofazamine is causing reddish black discoloration of secretion as well as skin and eyes? So, and because of this, the patient which are uh, taking clopazamine for six months, they undergo depression, which is a severe thing because cosmetically it is not acceptable. Apart from that, eosinophilic enteritis is one of the peculiar side effect of clopazamine. The drug interaction are uh, that Depson inhibits the anti-inflammatory action of clopazamine because both are anti-inflammatory in nature and both are competing for the same target for their anti-inflammatory action. So, but still we are giving these together because they are. Both are having anti-inflammatory property, and uh, somehow in this competition as well, they will show their show their anti-inflammatory actions. Rifampicin we already discussed in ATT. Bactericidal we know, and rifampicin uh, is another agent. Uh, as I said, rifampicin, rifampicin, rifampicin are the three congener. Then ethanomide it has also significant anti-leprotic activity, but it is hepatotoxic. And uh, it can be used in as an alternative to clopazamine, where you cannot use clopazamine, you can use ethanomide. It is you can you can say it as a second line, your yeah, first line reserve drug for treatment of leprosy. Other anti-leprotic, <coughs> sorry, 
which can be used are fluoroquinolones, opaloxacin, papaloxacin, getifloxacin, uh, but not ciprofloxacin. This is very, very important. So nowadays, ciprofloxacin is uh, not used very, uh, you know, very much commonly. Uh, these drugs are used. So ciprofloxacin are mainly used for treatment of GID infections. Minocycline, uh, due to its high lipophilicity, it is also active against Mycobacterium leprae because it can enter into the tissue uh, which is harboring Mycobacterium leprae so that uh, the accessibility is good for minocycline. So as far as uh, the comparison to rifampicin and clarithromycin is concerned, its antibacterial activity is less than rifampicin but more than clarithromycin. So obviously, uh, it is uh, rifampicin is the first line drug, so activity of rifampicin would be better. But uh, as compared to clarithromycin, which are macro, which is a macrolide, minocycline activity is less. Uh, uh, sorry, more more than clarithromycin. Now clarithromycin, it is an only macrolide antibiotic having significant activity against Mycobacterium leprae. This you need to remember. So, clarithromycin amongst all the macrolide is the only chosen macrolide which is found to have some activity against leprae. <coughs> so, we use it in as a second line drug for treatment of leprosy. So, diagnosis of leprosy, this you need to again uh, read from your pathology book. Here we can see that there is any of the following like skin lesions, hyperpigmented patches. This is very, very important symptom. All of you, if someone tells you that uh, in my body, in my skin, there is some hypopigmented patches appear, do not take it lightly. Always consider it as leprosy until unless proven otherwise. So what you do first thing is try to touch that hypopigmented area. If the nerve sensitivity also gone, if the touch response is not there, then it is almost confirmed that it is leprosy and we need to go for further investigation and starting treatment as soon as possible because the damage of nerve will be irreversible. Once they start, you know, uh, the bacteria start uh, infecting the nerves, the, uh, the damage will be irreparable, irreversible. So that's why it is very, very important to find the, uh, diagnose the disease as soon as you get skin lesions and then start the treatment so it is completely you know uh, treatable no issue at all impaired loss of sensation this is what i said acid pass bacilli in skin smear is the testing technique and then nerve thickening is another uh, sign for leprosy so here is the treatment uh, of leprosy leprosy as we discussed primarily affect the skin mucous membrane and nerve it is prevalent in poor, low socioeconomic strata, both TB and uh, leprosy. Because of the malnourishment, as I told you, all the mycobacterium are harboring in us also. But because we are well fed, we are our, our stomach is full, our immunity is good. That's why we are not developing leprosy and TB. Otherwise, the poor who are not having food to eat, who are not having hygienic condition to live, their immunity goes down and uh, they develop with the treatment with the leprosy and TB. So in 1955, Net National Leprosy Control Program was launched and in 1982, it was changed to NLEP, that is Net National Leprosy Eradication Program. So NLEP is National Leprosy Eradication Program. NTEP is National Tuberculosis Elimination Program. There is a difference between elimination and er eradication and you are, uh, you know, uh, I highly recommend it to read these terms, eradication and elimination from your community medicine books. So, India achieved elimination of leprosy as a public health problem. So, we eliminated it and incidents are now less than one case per 10,000 population. This is the definition of elimination. Actually, if you find less than one case per 10,000 population in your geographical location, you can uh, claim it as eliminated. So now, as I told you, there are two types, multibacillary, posibacillary. These are the way through which you can diagnose whether it is multi or posi, like more than or equal to six skin lesions, more than one nerve involved. A skin smear test positive, lepromin test negative. This all you will read from microbiology and pathology. Okay, what is lepromin test? Read it from microbiology. Oh, what is skin smear test? So here, positive skin smear test and negative lepromin test is multibacillary. Treatment, as I already told you, MDT, 3 days, reduction, depth, and glucosamine, and for 12 months, 
if it is multi bacillary this is the minimum duration it can be increased depending on the treatment what is the dose <coughs> there is there is a single dose of rifampicin 600 mg per month only once in a month and that should be under supervision so when the patient goes to the clinic for taking these drugs there only they uh, you know in front of uh, a medical team and uh, they tell patient to receive this every month when they go for a new uh, monthly sachet for the fixed dose combination for their treatment uh, the pharmacy need to take right at the center only not at home so this is under supervision then dapsone uh, 100 mg per day self administration so for 30 days 30 tablets and lufosamin divided into two just like rifampicin uh, 300 mg is given uh, monthly under supervision with rifampicin and then 50 mg per day for self administration any doubt so far uh, okay so remember this regimen this is very very important to uh, remember three drugs rifampicin dapson clofazamin one uh, drug is giving under supervision for once in a month 600 mg other drug is we are giving dapson per day not under supervision self administration is required 100 mg per day third drug is clofazamin which is divided into two one al- similar to rifampicin is given once in a month under supervision 300 mg just half the dose of rifampicin and then 50 mg per day self administration for all the 30 days just half the dose of dapsone so this is how you need to remember it and this this regimen will continue for 12 minimum 12 month in multi bacillary and minimum 6 month uh, <coughs> in post bacillary so this is the same treatment so we are not going to discuss it here you need to remember the difference between multi bacillary and post bacillary here you can see skin smear test negative and lepromin test positive less than 6 skin lesion and no or one nerve involved then we diagnose it as post bacillary so earlier it is very very important to, uh, to you know for choice of drug whether clofazamin should be added or not but nowadays because treatment is same you can continue the same treatment in both only the duration is reduced in post bacillary okay then there is one uh, entity called single lesion <laughs> posi bacillary <coughs> where you can see the all the properties like posi bacillary but only one lesion it is very very common here one regimen has been made that is rom rom single dose like rifampicin 600 mg ofloxacin 400 mg and neocytin 100 mg fixed dose combination is given to the patient single dose and it will get treated after that they will be called after one month if one month then six month if there is any uh, relapse or if there more than one skin lesion demand you can treat accordingly whether it is possible bacillary or multi bacillary on that we will treat the patient so uh, just remember this rom uh, regimen for treatment of single lesion possible bacillary 600 400 uh, so this is the latest who guideline which we already discussed so uh, this is taken from the guideline itself so you can see here all the three drugs rifampicin clofazamin and dapsone 600 300 100 mg 350 which we discussed and duration is 6 months and 12 months uh, age wise uh, uh, doses here is given here like for 10 to 15 years of age of child the dose decreases from 600 to 450 for rifampicin and 300 to 150 for clofazamin and jo hum single dete hain once in a month and uh, 50 mg for dapsone and if children is less than 10 year or less than 40 kg weight we will give on the basis of their weight like 10 mg per kg rifampicin 6 mg per kg clofazamin 1 mg per kg daily and 2 mg per kg daily dapsone so you need to remember this as well there, there this is uh, the most important is the first one adult wala but uh, these two category also need to remember so this is the latest uh, recommendation for treatment of leprosy <coughs> okay 
so let's see the alternative regimens like in case there is reference in resistance or when mdt is not advisable we can add some alternative regimen like clofazimine plus any of the two either ofloxacin minofloxacin or clarithromycin any of these two we can select depending on the status of the patient for 3 months 6 months and then we follow for next 18 months we will give clofazimine plus any one of these two drugs so one drug again we drop and for 18 months we give so total treatment is 18 plus 6 month in case of rapamycin resistance or in case you are not able to give uh, first line drugs like rapamycin and daptron so the duration increase uh, significantly but we have some choices so this is a recommended regimen for drug resistant leprosy like you can see here or the same uh, group of drug rapamycin resistance अगर है तो वन ड्रग इज यू नो क्लोफाजिमिन एंड वी वी कैन चूज एनी ऑफ द टू ड्रग फ्रॉम ओफ्लोक्सिन मिनोसाइक्लिन क्लोरेट्रोमाइसिन सो वन रेजिमेन इज ओफ्लोक्सिन मिनोसाइक्लिन क्लोफाजिमिन अदर वन इज ओफ्लोक्सिन क्लोरेट्रोमाइसिन क्लोफाजिमिन द डोजेस आर 400 फॉर ओफ्लोक्सिन 100 फॉर मिनोसाइक्लिन 50 फॉर क्लोफाजिमिन एंड 500 फॉर क्लोरेट्रोमाइसिन Uh, for first six month and next eighteen month we reduce we, we decrease one one of the drug so we can if you are giving this regimen either drop ofloxacin or minocycline if you are using this regimen either drop uh, so they are uh, uh, dropping here the clarithromycin so only two drugs we will use for next eighteen months if there is resistance to rifampicin and uh, chloroquinolone like ofloxacin there is a regimen. Clarithromycin, so we cannot give <laughs> ofloxacin now. <laughs> so anyhow, we need to give these three drug now: clarithromycin, minocycline, clofazimin. Okay, and we will drop one of the two drugs, like either clarithromycin or minocycline, for next eighteen months. So one thing you need to remember is uh, the first line uh, MDT, that is rifampicin, clofazimin, and daptron. First choice. You should remember Rome regimen for single lesion for subsidiary. and you should remember the drug regime regimen for drug resistance leprosy where we are using either of the drug ofloxacin minocycline and clarithromycin along with clofazimin and if there is resistance to clofazimin as well uh, uh, we can change it to uh, ethionamide which we already discussed here it is written that ofloxacin 400 and we can replace by lipofloxacin 500 and your moxifloxacin 400 and so any of these fluoroquinolone can be used ofloxacin or lipofloxacin or moxifloxacin only ciprofloxacin cannot be used okay now uh, treatment of lepra reaction so leprosy treatment uh, it is uh, very very important to understand what is lepra reaction again it is highly recommended for you to read it from robins pathology about lepra reaction what are the uh, features what are the uh, you know characteristics of this lepra reaction there are two type of reactional state which may occur with therapy so it is related to therapy it is not related basically to the infection so whenever we are giving these drugs to treat leprosy these two type of uh, reaction can develop one is type 1 lepra reaction one is type 2 lepra reaction so type 1 lepra reaction which is a reversal reaction so it happens in borderline leprosy due to increase in host immunity skin lesions and nerves become swollen and tender without systemic manifestation so this is very important here in type 1 there is no systemic manifestation there is only uh, you know <coughs> increase in host immunity so there is a reaction to uh, the disease and the drug we are giving so we give immunosuppressant simply that is steroids that is prednisolone and thalidomide is a drug which we will discuss later on it is not effective here so this is type 1 lepra reaction <coughs> this is given in very very superficial way there is a lot of uh, characteristic to type 1 and type 2 lepra reaction and how to how to differentiate both you need to read it by your own then uh, or in uh, pathology they will discuss type 2 lepra reaction are also known as enl it is a very important term erythema nodosum leprosum which is mostly absorbed in papromatous leprosy so type 1 is mostly observed in uh, borderline while type 2 is mostly observed in lepromatous leprosy there is skin and nerve manifestation with systemic involvement in fever this is very important differentiation between type 1 and type 2 so here because systemic involvement is there we are adding 
some drugs like for treatment you need to give an analgesic and an antipyretic obviously because uh, uh, anti inflammatory drug as well so in anti inflammatory drug we give prednisolone or thalidomide so thalidomide is a drug which can be used as immunosuppressant in treatment of leprosy reaction type 2 it, it is not used in type 1 reaction so this is what you need to remember in type 1 just remember prednisolone is the only drug whatever rest of the drug clofazimin thalidomide chloroquine we can give in type 2 chloroquine and cytotoxic drugs are also effective so clofazimin uh, uh, require 3 to 4 weeks so not suitable for acute cases but useful in chronic cases and prevention of this reaction so in type 2 you can use thalidomide prednisolone clofazimin it is very very important to remember that there is no need to stop anti leprotic drug although the reaction is happening because of anti leprotic drug you are giving treatment to the those leprosy reaction but anti leprotic drug should continue so this is a drug for prophylaxis like we read in the prophylaxis of tb uh chemo prophylaxis similarly here uh, rifampicin dose for single dose rifampicin there is uh sdr uh single dose rifampicin is used for jaise in att prophylaxis we were using isoniazide for 6 months similarly here we are using rifampicin <coughs> and here is the uh, weight and age based distribution of the dose of rifampicin single dose so for adults the seniors and above we use 600 mg for 10 10 to 14 years we used 450 which is already we have seen and uh, then 300 mg for uh, 6 to 9 years and then weight based 10 mg per kg for less than 20 kg and more than equal to 2 years so we should not use these drugs less than 2 year of population so this is all about leprosy a uh, very very important note here to discuss that never use a single drug for chemotherapy in tuberculosis and leprosy a combination of two or more drugs must be used the reason you already know now to uh, you know decrease reduce the development of resistance the main reason for that is uh, this one so this is all about our uh, pharmacotherapy of leprosy okay any question so far you can ask uh, and uh, one more poll i have here just a minute there it is okay this is a, again a very simple question i am launch, launching it for another 5 minutes so you can vote for it you can go and come back in 5 minutes i am i am giving a 5 minutes break then we will discuss uh, the treatment of anaerobic infection and it will be again 15 20 minutes maximum class so uh, it's okay we will finish it on time so you are asking a question that single dose rifampicin for prophylaxis is given for how much time prakar agar main aapse puchu ki what is the drug of choice for iron deficiency anemia what would be your answer iron deficiency anemia mein kya doge prakar answer yes so single dose rifampicin mein duration tak kaise question aayega
producing uh, bacteria from there. Then metronidazole is the preferred antibiotic. Penicillin can be used alternatively. So metronidazole is actually the drug of choice for anaerobic uh, bacteria infection. Metronidazole, although it is an antiprotozoal drug or anti-amoebic drug, which we'll see when we'll read the topic of anti-amoebic therapy, but it is having very, very good activity against anti antibacterial uh, anaerobic bacteria. Sorry. So, and we will see the mechanism of action as well. When we discuss remember that patient having developed the symptom, sign and symptom of tetanus. <coughs> then comes another species of uh, uh, Clostridium, uh, that is Clostridium botulinum. So, botulinum toxin is among the most toxic substances known. Thus, it is of concern as potential weapon for bioterrorism also. So, this is very important. The highlight so <coughs> here the ministry of treatment are meticulous supportive care and immediate administration of botulinum antitoxin this is very very important this is the only specific treatment actually available then equine antitoxin and human origin antitoxin are available mostly we Toxin because that point antitoxin will have a lot of allergic uh, reactions. Then some antimicrobial therapy like penicillin can be given. And as its clinical efficacy has not been established, may result in increased circulating toxin from lysis of bacteria. So this is the difficulty with antimicrobial therapy is that if antimicrobial therapy like penicillin kills the bacteria, the bacteria are filled with this with this toxin. So it may be it may lead to excessive toxin in the blood and may precipitate the condition. So it is very, very risky. So that's why it's, it is said that in botulinum, botulinum treatment, the only specific treatment is botulinum antitoxin. You have to give it earlier so that if you are giving antimicrobial therapy as well, and if there is over spilling of toxin from the bacteria, again, because botulinum toxin is uh, there, it can be used. Okay, so this is uh, titanine botulinum. Apart from that, there are other clostridial infections. We are focusing mainly on clostridia because <coughs> they are commonly anaerobic bacteria which cause infections. So the conditions are mostly polymicrobial anaerobic infections involving clostridia. So not only clostridium, but many an other anaerobic bacteria will also be there, like an abdominal wall and gynecological uh, parts. So, the antibiotic treatment we give is ampicillin plus clindamycin plus ciprofloxacin. You know everything about ampicillin. It is a penicillin group of drug cell wall synthesis inhibitor. You know everything about ciprofloxacin. It is a fluoroquinolone. Clindamycin, you might know, it is a miscellaneous drug in uh, mostly resembling the uh, which class they resemble. You, you know that uh, actually clindamycin resembling macrolide group of antibiotics. And they are mainly focusing on, uh, you know, gram uh, positive uh, uh, anaerobes. So, which is totally opposite with aminoglycoside, where you find gram negative aerobes is the main target of aminoglycoside. Here, clindamycin is a very, very specific drug for uh, gram positive anaerobes. So, apart from metronidazole, the second choice of drug for treatment of anaerobic infection is clindamycin. So, whenever you want to cover anaerobic infection, you, you may find in clinical practice the metronidazole or clindamycin in the regimen of other antibiotics. So, ampicillin, clindamycin, ciprofloxacin is, is a one uh, broad spectrum regimen covering anaerobic bacteria. If there is allergy to the penicillin, you can shift to bancomycin and uh, then we can add metronidazole and ciprofloxacin. Empirical therapy should be initiated. Empirical therapy means before diagnosis, whatever you are giving. After diagnosis, which is 
whatever drug you are giving is definitive therapy that you know the bacteria and you are giving the drug specific to that bacteria but empirical therapy is before the diagnosis just by seeing the sign and symptom we are starting our treatment to save a life that is empirical therapy then therapy should be based on gram staining and cultural result and on sensitivity data so whatever result will come after culture sensitivity we will change our drugs so this is one thing then you can see in case of clostridial sepsis there is again the regimen like penicillin uh, plus clindamycin if there is allergy to the penicillin you can give uh, clindamycin alone or vancomycin alone or metronidazole alone for clostridial sepsis transient bacteremia without sign of systemic toxicity may be clinically insignificant so uh, this is another regimen which you need to remember okay then there is one more regimen for gas gangrene treatment here you can see antibiotic treatment is penicillin plus clindamycin if there is allergy to penicillin uh, it will be changed by change with ciprofloxacin which is cephalosporin group of drug plus clindamycin so you can see the the you know need of clindamycin <laughs> i'm sorry and metronidazole in anaerobic infection this is very very important with gas gangrene that emergent surgical exploration and thorough debridement should be done and there is one more thing that is hyperbaric oxygen therapy because this is the anaerobic bacterial infection if we provide oxygen the bacteria will not will not survive because they are obligatory anaerobic organism so these two things is very very important along with the pharmaco treatment like surgical debridement and exploration and hyperbaric oxygen therapy theek okay. hai so now comes to mixed anaerobic infections earlier we see mostly the clostridial infections now mixed in anaerobic anaerobic infection the infection caused by uh anaerobes are typically polymicrobial means including at least one anaerobic organism and sometimes involving microaerobic and facultative also so facultative which are anaerobic as well as anaerobic
Okay, am I am I audible now? Uh, can anyone tell me that am I audible now? Okay, Dhoni, thank you. So, uh, okay, fine. And slides are visible, I hope. Okay, fine. So we were discussing this. Uh, I am uh, repeating the first slide. I I think I don't know whether it is it was where it was hanged. I don't know. So let's see. Uh, I was discussing some uh, categories, category-wise treatment. Here I am expecting you to just, uh, you know, remember the names of the drugs so that uh, you you know that what are the drugs which are available for the treatment of anaerobic infection. It doesn't matter whether you know the category-wise treatment or no, not. But at least remember these names, like in category one, where anaerobes are very very active. Here we can use these drugs like carbapenem, metronidazole. Beta lactam and beta lactamase inhibitor combination like amoxicillabulinic acid or fipronil, fipronil and tagovactam combination or uh, uh, ampicillin sulbactam combination and broad spectrum penicillins like uh, chloramphenicol. Then category two where you see the anaerobic uh, gram-negative rods are usually active. It means uh, not always active but usually active. So here we have these drugs, TG cyclin, which is a newer entry in the tetracycline group of drugs with less side effects and less, uh, you know, uh, chances of development of resistance and high dose of anti-pseudomonal penicillin. So you must know what are the penicillins which are having anti-pseudomonal activity. Okay, those drugs with high dose you can use. Then category 3 where there is a variable resistance to the category 1 and category 2 drugs. So you can use clindamycin which is very, very good drug for treatment of anaerobic bacteria. As I told you, it is macrolide uh, kind of drug. So all the mechanism is like that. Only penicillins, which you already know, cephalosporins, tetracyclines, vancomycin, erythromycin, moxifloxacin. These are the drugs which can be used in category 3 variable resistance treatment, but they are not that much active, which like just like your uh, category 1 and category 2. Category 1 drugs and category 2 drugs are main drugs. Apart from that, we can use these drugs as well. So just remember the names, what are the drugs which can be used and you will find almost all the drugs which are having a little bit of anaerobic property also like uh, penicillins, uh, you know, from cell wall synthesis in beta cephalosporins, then tetracycline, broad spectrum antibiotic, uh, again, chloramphenicol is also there, and vancomycin, cell wall synthesis in beta erythromycin, macrolide, boxes, boxes in chloroquine launch. So almost all the group of drugs are having some drugs which are having antibacterial property against anaerobic gram-negative rods. And the fourth one is uh, in resistance cases, some injectable drugs like aminoglycosides can be used and monoagvectums which are higher end cell wall synthesis inhibitor can be used. And then trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole which is co-trimoxazole actually and which is a very, very effective drug against uh, some anaerobic gram negative infection. The concept about this is to remember that what are the possible drugs which are used for treatment of anaerobic bacteria. As I told you, metronidazole and clindamycin are the first preferred drug. Like metronidazole can be can be used as a first line drug for any anaerobic bacterial infection. Second thing, we have option of clindamycin. Apart from that, 
drugs from all the groups are being added like penicillin group like clarithromycin which is a macrolide so the drugs which are very very useful in treatment of anaerobic bacteria are these drugs uh, aminoglycosides are mostly not useful in aerobic infection they are very very specific for gram negative aerobic uh, microorganisms so this kind of thing you need to remember as far as the treatment of or pharmacotherapy of anaerobic bacteria is concerned so this is all about our, our topic for today which was uh, drug treatment of leprosy and drug treatment of uh, anaerobic bacteria so we have finished so far tb leprosy and uh, anaerobic uh, bacteria treatment we will continue with uh, most probably we will start malaria treatment of malaria in our next class or or antiviral or antifungal let's see i will share the link with you and so right now please do not leave the class as dr razi is going to connect with you and uh, uh, need to share some instructions with you just for 5 10 minutes please be with us thank you very much don't leave the class until we say you to leave okay over to you dr razi All right. So, guys, can you hear me? All right. So, you guys can hear me. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to share you uh, some instructions regarding the upcoming exam. The instructions have already been shared with you on the WhatsApp group. I'm just going to repeat them for your sake. I'm just going to repeat them for your sake. I hope all of you have read the instructions. So an online pre-R theory examination will be conducted through Google Meet. गूगल मीट कितने लोगों को आता है जलाना यू गाइस कैन सी मी वाओ सब क्या मी ऑन है मुझे तो नहीं दिख रहा व्यक्ति मां Okay, student is asking uh, is it a theoretical or MCQ exam? No, it is not an MCQ exam. It is a 